Ava, you've been on for a while. I'm Ava Nanda. Welcome to Beyond the Matrix, a show that explores the mysteries of life and empowers you with knowledge about the body, mind, and spirit. It is the purpose of today's show to acquaint you with the intriguing world of crystals. Crystals are unacknowledged pillars of modern technology. They are used in lasers, semiconductors, magnetic devices, optical devices, superconductors, and telecommunication. The ubiquitous quartz surrounds us. It's everywhere. In the earth, in our homes, it is at the heart of almost every piece of consumer electronics. I know the effects and the powers of crystal firsthand. I teach on Siesta Key Beach, which is a sand that is composed of 99% quartz crystal. That's why this program is so interesting for me as well to help us to understand this beautiful mineral and its many extraordinary properties. <clears throat> we have, excuse me, Angela Valentine, who is a certified crystal therapist, pranic healer, Reiki master, certified tuning fork practitioner, and she holds certifications in so many other healing modalities. I'm so happy to have you here today. Welcome to the program, Angela. Thank you so much, Avanand. I'm so glad to be here. This is quite an honor. Well, we're, the, the crystals are so beautiful, and um, I can already feel their energy. They are amazing, yeah. yes. Well, as I mentioned in the opening, crystals do play a major role in modern technology and I'd like to investigate some of the scientific properties of crystals first with you. What are the qualities of crystals that make it so useful to science? Well what's interesting about crystals and how they are different from something like um like a, a rock or granite or basalt is that crystals have a particular structure. They have a very regular structure. Mm -hmm. They have uh, almost a grid-like pattern mm -hmm. of the way that their molecules are just are constructed so that they're almost in geometrical patterns and the energy can flow through crystals through that geometrical pattern. In fact, uh, quartz crystal is pretty amazing because not only does it have that grid-like structured pattern of its molecules, but it's in a hexagram. It has a helical, spherical configuration where the energy can actually flow through it through a spiral and be sent through it. Oh, so and the spirals are an extremely interesting formation that nature uses over and over again sure in her creations. And very powerful too. In fact, that's <clears throat> what uh, most of life is composed of with yes. DNA strands yes. is the spiral. And the uh, minute to the very large. Absolutely. Yes. And so that's what <clears throat> gives it uh, a great Our amount of power. Yes. With, with that spiral energy. Now, other crystals have other forms as well. Many of them are in um, other forms besides the six-sided form. Mm -hmm. There are many different uh, classifications of crystals because of their particular structure. Mm -hmm. And their properties are based on the crystal's structure. Yeah. as far as how they can do different things. And what's interesting uh, about crystals is that they do contain their own energy. You can actually put a crystal on a, a Curlian photography setup and you can see the energy beaming out from them. So they contain their own energy as well as being able to pull energy through them yes, to absorb and to guide it. the energy in other words. To guide it. What's interesting is that crystals 
along with perhaps ceramics, have what they call the piezo electric effect. Yes, isn't Do you that know interesting? That, what that yes. is? Tell our mm -hmm. audience about that. I find that fascinating. That is interesting. The piezoelectric <laughs> effect, you can press on a crystal and release it, and energy will shoot through it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Piezoelectric. So according to how much pressure, it creates mm -hmm. equal energy, equal electrical energy within the um, crystal. Isn't that right? Right. 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 And you can send energy through it, and it will act actually transmit through the crystal or amplify through the crystal. Amplify. Mm -hmm. It can be increased. It can also store energy and store information. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the uh, ancient societies believed that crystals stored information almost like today's computers. Which they literally do Which they store. Can. They yes. can store information. On a microchip. Mm -hmm. On a microchip. So They're it's made of really silica. a marvelous um, uh, mineral. It is so amazing. In esoteric thought, the crystal is analogous to the third eye. So that the idea is that the earth being a living being, yes. the minerals of her body mm -hmm. are her flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And that the crystal represents the pineal gland, the pineal gland. Yes. So that it is used by the earth herself to connect to the spirit, mm -hmm. because all, all, um, everything in life is sentient. Yes, it is. And the earth is also sentient, and it's the crystal. It's interesting how how its clarity. Um, uh, I hear that when the crystal is pure, that it is a conduit to spirit, a clear conduit to spirit. Is that right? Yeah, and that's interesting that you mentioned the pineal gland because yes. that's where light enters in through us exactly. and light is information and energy and... Um, exactly. And to have exactly. that also go through the crystals, light goes through crystals too and is transformed and It's also them. interesting that the gentleman whose name uh, eludes me for this moment, but he was the one who pioneered um, uh, crystals, uh, quartz crystals in computer technology. He noticed that the crystals also um, can be altered by thought processes, that is by the intention, by the thoughts that are conveyed to it, that it actually literally reconstructs right. the crystal. So it's, he called the crystal much like an iceberg. In other words, the part we see at the top of the ocean, that's the, top, that's the part we see. The crystal is what we see, but underneath mm -hmm. is the largest part which connects to pure spirit. And it is what guides or what connects matter and spirit. Yes. So that's why it's such a, uh, a metaphysically beautiful uh, mineral. And actually that brings up an interesting point too that most things that we are aware of in our society is similar to the, the iceberg concept where we think we know what we're talking about and we know this much yes. and there's so much more yes, to everything. everything is connected to spirit, to but, but to spirit, the crystal yeah. particularly is the means by which mm -hmm. Earth herself speaks to spirit. So it's a right. beautiful, beautiful mineral. <clears throat> so, you know, let's sum up what um, the crystals do uh, scientifically as well, uh, being um, the five primary physical properties of them. Could you list those if you know them? Sure. They can absorb energy. Mm -hmm. They can store energy. They can transmit energy. Let's see. Absorb and they store. They transmit. They amplify energy. They amplify. And, and they transform. And transform they energy. transform energy. Right, right. Yeah. And those are the scientific properties of them. Absolutely. That's what they do with a, a mm -hmm. physical, electrical energy. And it's that, been proven through science. Of course. Mm -hmm. as, as it's ubiquitous, as I said, mm -hmm. throughout our culture. Yeah. But what's interesting is metaphysically you can use the same properties and, and 
see that the crystals function in the very same way metaphysically. They do. Yes. Right. And that's the other part of the iceberg. <laughs> and that's the other part of the iceberg, exactly. Um, if you could just... It makes it so obvious, then, that the crystal can be used for meditation. Yes. For healing. Right. Um, and for balancing one's... Um, emotional body and etheric body as well as, as, as the, the chemistry of the body itself. Right. So I know you've brought some beautiful crystals with you today, so I was wondering if, if we could um, just generically, what sort of crystal would one use for anxiety or stress or when one is feeling negative? Because generally, this is this is a um, a common state right, of mind right. in modern uh, society due to all the, you know, um, mm -hmm. pressures. There are so many stones that can be used, crystals that can yes. be used for that. And some of the top ones that come to my mind, the mm -hmm. first one is amethyst. Oh, well, amethyst, that's a common it's a one. Very common, very easy to find, beautiful. Uh, I have an amethyst uh, wand here. Oh yes. Yeah, so you can see the beautiful purple color yes. of that. And it also comes in uh, points or in little little pieces that you could hold in your hand as well. But and amethyst, does it matter what the shape of it is? You know, different shapes do actually have different abilities. A wand, something like this, would send the energy through it and to the point, and it would have a, a very yes. uh, precise, uh, yes. but something that, uh, something kind of larger like this that you can hold on to, you know, um, or even something that's polished and round, the energy would go off in all different directions. So yeah, the structure does um, have, a little so bit of a... So is there any um, guide as to what kind of structure you should be looking for? or? Um well, you know, the tumbled stones are wonderful to mm -hmm. use for pretty much anything. You can just get the little small stones that you can get at a, at a metaphysical store, and you can mm -hmm. always hold them. You can put them in, um, in your pocket, in your purse, hold them in your hands. Mm -hmm. You can wear them as jewelry. And if you wanted to do uh, more precise healing work, the, the points would send energy through them more specifically, more targeted. Yes. Um, <clears throat> if you had little round stones, knowing that the energy goes out from them 360 degrees, those would be nice to hold if you're going to do a meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, but as far as some other crystals, just to give some more ideas for anxiety, anything blue would be nice too. Blue. A blue so lace color is agate. Very important. Blue, yeah, the colors relate to the chakras, chakras. and yes. also... We'll, we'll explain that later. Yeah. Not everyone is familiar with with what chakras are. But, sure, sure. But certainly, sure. yes. And colors actually have scientifically been proven to have effects too. So mm -hmm. if you're using a colored cloth or a colored paint or a colored crystal, yes, then the color... So you could get a color chart and... You could. You could then you could uh, choose, choose a according to what each color means. That would be right? a great idea so for how, a beginner. And blue is a relax, relaxing, relaxing color. calming, cooling, cooling sedating. Color. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be great for anxiety. A, a blue calcite or a blue lace agate. Um, and what about energy? What if someone is feeling lethargic or oh, just, right. just fatigued all the time? I would go the opposite direction and I would use red. Red uh -huh. is very vitalizing. And do you have an example of a red We have a beautiful chance? red jasper here. If we can see this uh -huh. red jasper. That's a crystal? This is a crystal. Red, really? Red jasper is a crystal. I didn't that's know that. That's uh, a wonderful, energizing. Uh -huh. uh, the red crystals, the orange crystals, uh, those all have an energizing effect. And clear quartz does as well. Yes. Um, in fact, clear quartz can be substituted for any other crystal because it contains the light of the clear quartz contains all colors within the spectrum oh, of white light. As white, light right, wood. right. So, so you if can someone were to 
to buy a single crystal for you themselves, it. Clear it would be clear quartz. That would be my number one first starter crystal would be a clear quartz because you can use it for pretty much any purpose. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you wanted the crystals, say you had a specific pain somewhere in your body, mm -hmm. would you put the crystal on that specific spot? You could. And then um, meditate? You could. That's a great idea. Rest is always good whenever mm -hmm. you have a pain, so you could. Um, the, the amethyst crystal I've used previously for a headache, and I would lay down and I put an amethyst on my head where I have my headache and just rest for a very short amount of time, and I realized, gee, that didn't take long. My headache is completely gone. Mm -hmm. And if you have a pain elsewhere in your body, uh, if you have a pain on your hip or your knee or... Uh, anywhere else you can place a crystal right on that area in fact you could even use a you know the medical tape that they have oh, yes. for band-aids you could actually tape it right on that oh, spot and leave it on there. and leave it on for a little while until the pain is gone or you you can what's interesting is that um, they did a Curlian photography of um, someone holding a crystal mm -hmm. before and after Oh, that must have been interesting. And uh, it literally doubled your aura. It does. It does. It so strengthens. it strengthens your aura, which means that the aura is simply reflective of the energy of your whole being. Yes. And so it's it's adding to you just by um, you holding on to it. It so does. So quartz it's crystal would probably be the best for that purpose, right? Quartz crystal is known for that. A beautiful, I've got a giant one, yes. a, nice, a nice big one here. Oh. Beautiful quartz crystal. And, and just is the clearer the better, this, or does it matter you know, that it's there's, cloudy? There's or? a lot of different information about that. Yes. Um, a lot of people like the clear ones. Of course, the properties of a clear quartz crystal help you with your own clarity within yourself. So if you were concerned about wanting to have clarity in your thinking, the clearer the quartz, the better. If you're going to use um, quartz to purify your water, you'd want the clearest quartz to mm -hmm. make clear, pure water. water. But so you're saying you, the quartz can be used to, to purify water? You can use crystals for water. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So would you put it... Energetically. In? Energetically. Right. Yeah, Purifying but not the, the impurities in the, in the water. Right, right, right. But it energetically, because there is energy in water. Water is similar to crystals in how yes, it, it is, absorbs it? and transmits uh, energy. Uh, and information as and well. And information and yeah, thought. And it has memory. Right. Yes, yeah, just right. like And the beautiful memory. work done by <laughs> Emoto. Uh, of course. With the of thought course. energy going into it. And they create crystals <laughs> they <create laughs> when they're frozen. So the, there's uh, similarity. Water. And our human bodies are composed of so much water that mm -hmm. the fact that crystals scientifically work with water is another reason that crystals work so well for us, for healing yes. and for... It's interesting that the crystal is thought of as the third eye of the earth, as, a, as we said. Mm -hmm. But water must be the eyes. Oh, if that's it were, interesting. If it were yeah. analogous, because with, the, with water there's also transmission of information, but there's absorption mostly of mm -hmm. information, as we do with our light. eyes and light, and it absorbs light. Right. So the, the water must be the eyes of the earth. That's interesting. I yeah. never thought of that before. I like it that concept. It just occurred to me. <laughs> right, right. That's that's a nice concept. Yes. A nice way to think of it. Yes. Uh, yeah. The whole composition of <laughs> of the uh, of all the elements of the earth are just magnificent, but particularly the crystal. Now, can if we want to use a crystal to provide us with energy because I can see this as a very popular um purpose for them mm -hmm. because we lack energy so much and we need so much energy to accomplish mm -hmm. all that we do 
Right. And we're always being drained of it. Even stress drains you of energy. Mm -hmm. So if we could have a crystal that was energetic, then um, in itself, then, it, then we could siphon off that energy from it. Well, um, in one way, um, but it's, uh, it's continually continuing to flow. Uh -huh. It's not like we're draining the crystal. Well, uh, no. Yeah. A siphon <laughs> but perhaps we, is not right. right. Although <laughs> we, I like that. Yes, <laughs> we will uh, absorb energy that is coming through the crystal and being provided to yes. us. Right. Yes. Right. So um, what I was thinking of is that maybe it would be interesting if we could talk about how we energize crystals is where I was headed for, with that. What can we do to put energy into it? I realize there are, are, are a few methods by which um, crystals can be energized, and I thought maybe we could list a few of those. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, one of the, the top ones that comes to my mind is, is sunlight. Yes, sunlight. that's the one I have and, here um, down. And of my course, doing one. yoga on the beach, you've got all that sun oh. on all that beautiful oh, yes. silicon, all Believe that me, sand. Believe me, the power Ooh. is palpable. <laughs> It and is. it's interesting that it, it's a transmitter of information because when I teach, I find I have so much command and control over, I have often 500 to 600 people out there. My goodness. And you have wow. to be able to, to make everyone understand what you want yes. in a very uh, clear. Uh, clear way. But the sand, the crystal, transmits it telepathically, mm. I believe. And that's why I think I can control that uh, class so, so beautifully out there. Mm -hmm. I get assistance from the quartz. I think you do. I'm sure you do. Now, yeah. I've also heard um, that for high energy, you put the crystals into the ocean at high tide. Right, but well, because there's more energy in the ocean at, at high, high tide. tide. Right. Yes, yeah. and so if That's you wanted idea. then the crystal to be more for relaxation and meditation, then you'd put put it in the ocean at low tide. Well, I think it energizes it either way. I think the yes, energy of the ocean. Yes, but I think ocean. that what they've they've said is that the low tide specifically. Everything is waning. It's calming. It's calming. It's calming. Yes. It, it would almost be like the moon's energy. Yes, exactly the same way. You could waning. put it out when mm. the moon is waxing or waning, waning. Yeah. and have the same effect, literally. Right. And I've also heard that some um, extraordinary times for uh, to imbue the crystal with energy is at the equinox. Yes. And the solstice. And we're so lucky that's coming right up. Yes, it's this, coming right up so yeah. that um, you can go out and put your crystal outside. On the beach. On the beach. <laughs> and because, you'll have enough energy for the entire right. year. In fact, quartz crystal, if you didn't have the sun, if it was a cloudy day, of course, there's still that energy. But if you were inside, let's say, maybe you have an apartment, if you had um, a little dish of sand or if you had uh, a quartz cluster, you could put other crystals. That's very pretty, That's isn't a it? pretty little clear one. Reminds me of the crystal cave yes. in a miniature version. <laughs> <laughs> you can put another crystal on top of... Uh, a quartz cluster, and that will energize that little that, that little crystal. crystal, the mm -hmm. one that's on top. Mm -hmm. I see. So you can use clear quartz to bring energy to other crystals, yes. and you can use the sand for that purpose as well. And tuning forks. So you are a uh, certified tuning, tuning forks. forks. Uh, practitioner. And I use the tuning forks to clear my crystals. That's actually my very favorite way to cleanse crystals. You can any particular. Um, Hertz. I like the Sonic Ohm by Ohm Therapeutics uh -huh. uh, because it's a very high vibration and it's actually can be used to clear your chakras, your energy centers, as well as to clear crystals because sound vibration cuts through everything. Mm -hmm. Those waves cut right through and can disperse 
yes. negative energies and they can cleanse the crystals. Of course, I still, you know, run them under the water and... Yes, they say, of course, the most mm -hmm. common way is running water and, of course, your yeah. thoughts. And your thoughts. Yeah. Um, in the uh, pranic healing training that I had, we actually activate our crown chakra and we send violet energy to the crystals and that violet helps to cleanse the energy of the mm -hmm. crystals too. There's mm -hmm. so many different ways. Yeah. Well, another wonderful use of crystals would be to unblock and to energize each of our chakras. But before mm -hmm. we attempt to um, correlate the, the uh, uh, crystal to the chakra, could you give our audience just a brief description of what um, chakras, chakras are. are. You know, I've got a great analogy for this oh, that makes it very easy to understand. Um, and I'll give the analogy and then I'll go into a little bit more specifics. Right. The analogy is that our chakras, which are our energy centers, are like little energy lungs. Mm -hmm. They breathe in and they breathe out energy. Mm -hmm. So they're pulling energy into our system and then that energy is dispersed throughout our entire energy anatomy, our mm -hmm. energy makeup um, yes. through those chakras. And they are located along the, the spinal they're column all the way up to the crown of the head. Exactly. And how many are there? Gosh, you know, there are so many chakras, but in our society, we typically count the main ones about seven chakras. Yes. And, there's and they each have specific purposes. They do. And they rule various body parts as well. Is they do. Right? And typically, uh, they, they energize, they pull energy into the body, and, and they energize the... Um, part of the body that they are close to. They also correlate to the endocrine gland system. Uh -huh. So you've got so that's the, the physical connection the to physical them. Connection. Because we're talking about the etheric body, the body that is envelops the body that we have. Right. The one that we can't see but mm -hmm. literally maintains and it's all interrelated and too. supports and 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 um, nourishes the the physical body. And these are the uh, ch chakra means wheel, so it's literally a spinning wheel mm -hmm. as is seen in meditation. Exactly. And so each one of our chakras then can be stimulated by crystals. They can. And, and so cleansed. let's go, let's try and, and go right to the root, to the root chakra. Okay, and, okay. And um, tell us about the root chakra and perhaps which uh, uh, crystal could be used to stimulate. Okay, okay. Uh, for for the purposes of this discussion, we're mm -hmm. talking about probably the seven main chakras yes. from root to crown, yes. and the root chakra we would call chakra number one, and that's at the very base of the spine, and the root chakra uh, that correlates to the color red typically in mm -hmm. most uh, um, metaphysical discussions, and it also correlates to the parts of the body that are in the lower part of the body, yes. so it's... Um, uh, the the legs, the feet, the uh, the pelvis, the mm -hmm. hips, the lower part of the spine, uh, the endocrine glands that it is related to is actually the adrenal glands, which is interesting. Oh, yes, yes. Right. So fight, flight, fight syndrome. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. So the survival. Survival That's and life is. issues as yes. far as am I going to make it? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough food? Do I have pure materialism, sensualism? That is that you 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 are um, uh, responsive to the senses and what right. they are telling you. So right. it's it's that relationship to the immediate environment. Exactly. Right. And, and being alive in this So if someone had a blocked root chakra, how would that manifest itself emotionally, psychologically? Psychologically, there would probably be fears and worries about not having enough or not being able to make it mm -hmm. or worrying that you didn't have enough money or that you didn't have enough food or mm -hmm. that uh, you might be... Your day-to-day -day survival, day -to -day survival issues. Right. And perhaps even if you're plagued by fear, mm -hmm. because fear is, is at the root chakra too. Right. And so that these crystals could help to unblock 
They help to unblock, um, and typically the, the crystals that are in the, the red family, um, a great crystal for the root chakra is a garnet. It's very Could deep, we see one of deep those? red. Let's see, where is the garnet? Here's the garnet. And I have a little one here, and it's so dark red if you hold it up to the light, you can see red through it. Uh -huh. But on camera, it yes, probably it be just very looks difficult. It's very best to dark. Describe it yeah. for our audience. So um, garnet is a, a dark red stone. Mm -hmm. um, another beautiful red stone that that could be used would be something like this. Uh, Jasper here, mm -hmm. this beautiful mm -hmm. red jasper. Ruby is another. Ruby would be beautiful. Another I beautiful love stone. Ruby. I have. Um, actually an entire beautiful mandala that I use whenever I do crystal healing for the root chakra, if I can hold I that see. up. I see, oh yeah. yes. So we've got a jasper in the middle and it's flanked by, let's say, a red tiger's eye and the red rubies around it. And then I actually have some quartz crystals to amplify the energy of the do jasper. Do you place those Proximate to the chakra, the location I do. of the chakra. I do. They, they're at each chakra, all the way up mm -hmm. the central part of the torso. Is where I place them. But do them. you make a um, a uh, investigation as to which chakra might be more in need? You can. Oh. You can use various. Um, you can use a pendulum to see if that chakra has energy and needs more energy. Um, I can actually sense with my hands uh, if a chakra is is depleted or if it needs more energy or if it's actually uh, too expansive and it needs some energy cleanse. Is it too much cleanse. to go into sort of a, a minor analysis of the person, ask them how they are um, That's a great relating method to too. life? Right, mm -hmm. that's so, another perfect method, yeah. Yes, so that's our root chakra, and root then chakra. we come to the second chakra. The second chakra, the sacral chakra, and uh, the sacral chakra relates to the uh, portion of the body that's in between the base of the torso and the navel. Mm -hmm. And that uh, relates to the bladder, the reproductive organs, uh, and also since it's about reproduction, it's about your creativity. And fluidity. And fluidity, yes, yes and because joy. Because the oceans, the sound of the ocean is the mm -hmm. sound that is um, uh, related to that chakra, is it not? That would yes. be a perfect... And what is the color? The color would be orange for in, orange. in, in most. Me. You've got lots of orange. <laughs> we have this beautiful orange yes. wall. So orange is a color of creativity and of yes. joy, and it relates very well to the... Uh, and, and a lot chakra. of energy. And a lot of energy. And uh, just to show you an example of some orange stones, we have an orange calcite. Could and you we lift have that up carnelian. just a little bit higher than that? There we are. There you go. That's if it. We can see those. Yes. Carnelian. I've got topaz in there too. Okay. And Which so is the green it? Greener. They look one. green. They're actually a golden color. They're just since they're next to the orange and these lights are oh, so I bright. See. They're yeah. But uh, topaz is also a topaz. good one. And carnelian um, is a wonderful stone for oh and here's a beautiful one here. This is one of my very favorite crystals. This is an amber. Oh and amber. It's, it's such a beautiful I love uh, is amber considered a crystal? Well, it's um, it's in the, the crystal books, and it's actually a resin from yes, a tree that's, that's ancient. So, yeah, it's, so uh, it doesn't have the... insects. <laughs> right, one. right. I used to have one that I wore around my neck. But it has uh, absorbed the sun and absorbed the yes. light and absorbed the energy for but millions of years. it's crystalline indeed. It's so beautiful. It has properties, but I wouldn't say that it has the structure. It has. It that lacks are, the structure right. and the yeah. and the um, almost the intelligence of the crystal. And yet, it's got the energy of life within it as well. So yeah. it does have that sentient. Uh, ability oh, just like as the crystals all things do, do. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. things are hierarchical. Let's just exactly. Say. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah. So 
Then we go to the third. The third chakra. That's the solar plexus. Mm -hmm. And that's around the, um, the end of the rib cage, mm -hmm. in between the rib cage and the navel. Yeah. And the solar plexus is all about your, your will and who you are and how you present yourself to the world and how you feel about mm -hmm. who you are. And um, its color is? Its color is yellow. But this color of the sun, color the radiant the sun. sun. Radiating yourself. Yes. Right. And they say it's also the seat of the ego, because the ego. of the, mm -hmm. because of that, because it's the 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 per, the personality that yes. you present to the world. Right. right, right. And so, if someone had a blockage there, they would behave in what way? They would probably feel insecure about who they are. Uh, they wouldn't have a lot of self confidence. Mm -hmm. um, they probably wouldn't have a lot of force of will as far yeah. as making things happen in their life, um, creating what they want in their life. They would probably be, um, you know, maybe holding themselves back yes. in a lot of ways because they, they wouldn't be sure. Shy, demure, Shy, yeah, reticent. Yeah. Which is fine. It's just one level of where we are. Yeah. But if they wanted to have more, yes, if they wanted to, to create a, a, a sense of, of more um, uh, feeling of that, be, that that they're able to present themselves to the right. to the world without being in any way intimidated by right them, and release right? the fear. Yes. Yes. So what? What um, particular some wonderful crystals, crystals would be appropriate uh, yellow for the crystals? For oh, aren't they beautiful? These are beautiful. So we have a tiger's eye in tiger's the center. Eye in the center. And then I have yellow jasper around that and citrine around that as well. Uh -huh. And uh, all three of those stones are wonderful for the third uh, for the solar plexus yes. chakra. So Anything in the yellow family, citrine is wonderful. Now if a person is attracted to any of these colors, is it because that particular chakra is um, uh, blocked or unblocked by it? Uh, by the fact that they prefer a p particular color? Well, I would I would think that if a chakra needs a little assistance, you might find yourself being drawn to or attracted to a certain crystal. Because it would in be blocked. light therapy, mm -hmm. what's interesting is that it is when you are um, when you have an antipathy towards a particular uh, color. Mm. That shows that that's where you may have a blockage, and you might and need it to heal it. You use the color that you have the antipathy to, mm -hmm. and use that to heal you, and that changes your psychology. Right, and it might ultimately end up being your favorite color after the therapy. After you've yes. healed so that aspect, so it might aspect. be the same thing you could do with you could. with these crystals as you well. Could. Yeah. So having the the crystal of the color of the chakra that you feel is in need would be a very good therapy, wouldn't you think? That would be very helpful, having that energy be With absorbed them. in your body. And yeah. the fourth chakra the is? The fourth chakra is our wonderful heart chakra. Yes. And the heart chakra is about relationships. It's about love of self, love of others, how you relate to people of all kinds, mm -hmm. whether it's your uh, family members, your friends, your spouse, uh, your acquaintances, uh, your boss. Uh, it's just the, um, the heart energy is that of caring for others mm -hmm. and some beautiful stones what color green green is or the color pink or pink it's well. interesting that the heart chakra actually has two colors that go very that's well. interesting too they yeah. did a they did a wonderful experiment and they um painted gel jail cells I heard pink about that yes. and everyone became very passive <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, the violence was reduced yeah. by simply painting pink pink in fact if you use a pink stone rose quartz is the stone par excellence so this is if you this feel that you cannot um that your emotions have been blocked that you cannot relate to other people 
um, that you find it hard to empathize with others. Exactly, right? and with yourself as well. Self love well. too. People yes. who uh, feel that they uh, don't uh, have enough self love, mm -hmm. that they don't feel mm -hmm. that they're lovable, or that others reject them, or they're worried about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the rose quartz can be an excellent stone for healing that, or helping mm -hmm. helping a person to. Uh, build up more self-love, self-trust, self-worth, self-forgiveness, as That's well right. as relationships with yes. others. It's very healing for that. And the others that you have that are for the heart chakra? A um, if you wanted to use ones? green stones, bloodstone is excellent. Bloodstone? bloodstone is Isn't a, that red? It's green, it's actually. Green. With the name bloodstone, you would think it is red. But bloodstone is a green stone that How has... How did it get its name? It has little specks of red jasper within it. That looks like and spattered looks like blood? And spattered blood. Well, isn't that interesting? It's interesting, but it's very healing for the heart, the physical heart, the circulation, the lungs. Yes, and what, what organ is associated with the heart, heart chakra? Well, actually, the endocrine system, the system um, it's the right. thymus, the thymus, which one, is your exactly. uh, immune system. But uh, the it's heart. It's interesting because yeah. um, the immune system rejects that which is not you. True. You know? And right. so it's interesting that that's the organ associated with love. So that the mm -hmm. when it is functioning well, it can determine who is you and who is not you. Right. And then to eventually to connect you with the outer world. So it's very interesting. That does go together very nicely mm -hmm. on an esoteric level. Yes. Yeah. They all, it makes a logical sense. It does. Once, and it's <laughs> hard for me to understand why science refuses to even look in this direction. But uh, I, uh, I think that they are coming around. Yeah, it yes. does make a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. So now, the fifth Chakra. The fifth chakra, the throat chakra, the throat. and the color for the it's throat really chakra the is throat. blue is at the throat, and it's the thyroid gland and mm -hmm. the parathyroid gland mm -hmm. here in the throat that is helped by uh, crystals of the blue color. So um, a blue lace agate, that calming one that we were mentioning mm -hmm. for anxiety, a blue lace agate, a kyanite. Um, but what are the... Attributes the attributes of for that, that chakra, uh, chakra is your expression, of course. This is where your yes. voice comes from. So your ability to express yourself, your ability to communicate with others. And it's interesting when I have seen blockages in the fifth chakra, mm -hmm. it may have to do with when a person is unable to speak their truth. Right. When right. they are not either honest with themselves or those around them. Right. And or they're not able to to speak for themselves, to speak up for themselves. You know, I think something that's related to that is also the ability to be authentic. To be authentic. And to be yes. who you really are and yes. to be able to express who you really are. And it's interesting that it's it's higher up so that how one communicates, what one uses to to describe um, the world, oneself, and all phenomenon, uh, really is the preamble to the higher psychic realm. That our speech has to be purified first before we can elevate to higher realms. Right, and it's also interesting that it's in between your heart and your head. Yes. And so to speak your truth, yes. you need to connect your and thought to, and, and your to heart. have beautiful speech as well mm -hmm. um, is very healing. Mm -hmm. So what particular crystals can we There's use to some help our wonderful chakra? blue uh, crystals? We have uh, turquoise mm -hmm. and sodalite kyanite, blue lace agate, I've got a little aquamarine here. Mm -hmm. So blue stones can be very and so healing beautiful for beautiful they are. They are awesome. What is that one on the bottom that has has that sheen and, and uh, this one here? Yes. This is kyanite. 
Kyanite can instantly align all of the chakras. It's one oh. of those stones that, um, crystals that's amazing for the entire energetic and system. And why is that? J just the energetic metaphysical properties of, of kyanite works with the entire aura, with all of the chakras, mm -hmm. instantly balances them, and supposedly it's a crystal that never needs to be cleansed because it doesn't hold negativity, it's constantly dispelling it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's mm -hmm. a wonderful one, especially for the throat chakra, supports the throat chakra. So, another way that people can um, determine for themselves which chakra they, they need is that they do a sort of a self-analysis before as to mm -hmm. um, where they're feeling anxiety, what That's they're feeling anxiety method. about. Right. And in speech, sometimes people actually physically have sore throats or have problems with their throats mm -hmm. um, where it becomes literal that there's a blockage, there's a physical problem with their throat. Right. But it has right. metaphysical um, sources. It could be a physical and metaphysical at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if you use uh, energy methods for uh, clearing out blockages and clearing out negative mm -hmm. energies and re-energizing with fresh energy, it could very well be that the physical problem might in time um, respond to that energy mm -hmm. in a way that is very healing. And then we travel up <laughs> <laughs> to uh, now the sixth chakra and where is that located? This is located right here mm -hmm. in between your eyebrows. It's sometimes called the brow chakra, mm -hmm. sometimes called the third eye. If you had a third eye it might be right yes, there. The inner eye. <laughs> the inner the eye. one that sees in instead of out. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the one that is connected to your own inner wisdom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, people actually activate this chakra in order to open up up to their intuitive abilities. Yes. Being able to Telepathy know. Telepathy and Telepathy. just pure in intuition right. and maybe even just a trust in the spiritual uh, possibilities of life, oh, you know? Yes. 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 And uh, when a person is blocked there, how? what would their symptoms be? Well, they might feel like they're not connected very well to their own guidance, their own wisdom. They may constantly um, ask, well, I don't know, uh, is this true for me? Is this not true for me? They don't feel or like they can know. maybe they're disconnected from their destiny as well. They that don't know the be. purpose in life. Exactly, right? exactly. Or um, how they're going to, um, who they are. Who they are, Yeah. right. Right. Yeah, and so then, um, what color is that? That's a deep, deep blue called an indigo blue. Mm -hmm. And here's a beautiful stone that's oh, an indigo that blue. I, you, right on the camera there, it's right over my third eye. Oh, is it? <laughs> and this is azurite. <clears throat> you can azurite. see it's got some sparkle to it. But it's azurite is very beautiful. It's a wonderful, yes. deep, rich blue. It's as if blue. you're looking at an evening sky with it the really stars is this out. one is just absolutely fascinating yeah. lapis so you would lazuli lay that right on your third you eye. can you can you can put that oh, right on your third yes. eye meditate with it lay lay down with mm -hmm. it or lean back and just put that right there on mm -hmm. your third eye and just allow for yourself to open up and receive that inner wisdom a, another favorite for a lot of people is lapis lazuli and that's uh, another oh, very and that's rich heart shape. Yeah, this yeah, one happens this to be a heart. Uh, a very rich, deep uh, blue. This was actually used often in ancient Egypt. Oh, a yes. very popular yes. stone yes, I, through I, ancient times. I saw times. the Egyptian um, exhibit that they had, and they had beautiful lapis, lapis. Uh, artwork. I think the Egyptians beautiful. knew all I think kinds of things. Yes. <laughs> yes. A very wise race. And so, 
we move to, to the, the very top, chakra. to the crown chakra. And the crown chakra. And it's literally at the crown at of the, the head. At the crown of the head, at the top of the head. Mm -hmm. And this is where we our energies open up to our spiritual connection to the divine or to our higher self. Oh, how wonderful. And its uh, color is uh, clear or violet, either of those two. Clear, uh, clear again, quartz, clear crystal. Quartz crystal is fabulous yes. for the crown chakra, as well as uh, an amethyst. Uh, or uh, anything uh, apophyllite. And Which the, is what is an apophyllite? Apophyllite looks like it. I didn't bring one here with oh. me, but you could picture it looking similar to this clear quartz. It's I extremely see. clear. And they tend to have little pyramids, the, the top of the, of the uh, points oh, uh, usually are in little pyramids um, and you can use apophyllite for assisting in that connection to your divine source bringing so it would be the perfect one if you were meditating beautiful for yes. meditation yeah apophyllite and clear quartz and clear quartz yeah and of course if someone were to have a block in that particular chakra which is a uh, great many people, I'm sure. <laughs> um, how, what would be the manifestation of that? I would believe that they would feel uh, very alone in the world, very separate from their uh, from their higher self, from their source energy. Uh, they would feel um, not connected to to God and all that is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That would probably be. Uh, they they probably wouldn't feel like they could access any wisdom from yes. okay, from guidance. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect because uh, at home I'm sure that people um, will resonate with one of these chakras, if not mm -hmm. more than one. Mm -hmm. And um, now, if a person just didn't realize that crystals were such a magnificent. Um, uh, metaphysical tool and they wanted to start a kit like a small sure, kit of sure. which ones would they choose well I would say and I've got a, a top uh, I can start with a top three okay. list and then go on to um, All right, yes. like a top ten list okay number one if you were to only have one crystal and experiment with that to see how that affects how you feel and yeah. affects your life. I would get a quartz crystal, yes. and you could have sense. yes, you could have it a, has such a, yes. a wide range of uses. You could get a little tumbled crystal like uh -huh. this, just something rounded, or you could get something that uh, had a, a point to it, uh -huh. something like that. You could uh, any shape that you want. Um, experiment with how that feels. Hold it in your hands while you're meditating and go within and see, you know, feel how that strengthens your aura. And you can actually use quartz crystal, clear quartz crystal. You can actually send your thoughts into it and give it a, give it a little, a little command, if you mm -hmm. would, program mm -hmm. it and say, please assist me with the healing of my anxiety, yes. whatever the issue is, yes. and just be with that and feel how that affects you. Uh, the second crystal I would say, if you were to only have two, would be to have an amethyst, because an amethyst is so healing on so many levels. Okay, uh, so that's quartz, quartz, quartz crystal and an amethyst. And an amethyst. And they're both very beautiful. Beautiful, you would easy want to, to find. Have those. You would. You love them when yes. you look at them. They're delightful. They're to, delightful, and just the sheer beauty of the looking beauty at them, of them. is mm -hmm. uh, uh, satisfying. Right. And right. even if you know nothing at all about crystals, the crystals' energies are working with you, whether you know what all of their uh, metaphysical properties are or not. Mm -hmm. um, they're very useful amethysts for. Um, helping you sleep very well at night, uh, helping you be less anxious. It's a master healer. It can be used for uh, healing pretty much anything in the body. So then the third crystal, if you could only have three. Yes, is and I think that's a good startup kit. A three. good startup kit. The, sometimes they can be a little pricey. Right? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. And it's fun to take it slow and really get to know each one. I would go to Rose Quartz. 
Rose quartz. A rose quartz. Oh, and right. actually, if you noticed, all three of these are in the quartz family. Yes. So they are all quartz. Amethyst is a quartz, too. Mm -hmm. So clear quartz, amethyst quartz, and rose quartz together would be the top three stones for general all-purpose well-being of, yeah. of your emotions, of your physical body, spiritual connections and abilities, uh, increasing your intuition. There's so much that just those three crystals can Excellent. do. And I want to show you a fun one. But you one. know, we have only about five minutes oh, left. Sure. So what I'd like you to do right now is just to kind of summarize how you work and okay. maybe give out a little information about if somebody would like to reach you and have you help them. Okay, um, I'd be glad with, to. Uh, crystal therapy. Sure. Yeah. I, I do um, a, a number of different modalities together. So I, I'm a crystal healer, a certified. Uh, I um, trained under Andrew Pacholik from New York. He's a renowned healer in New York. Um, and uh, I do crystal therapy as well as um, I actually tune in with each person and design uh, something that will be perfect for what their yeah. actual needs are. Whether do you they have a website? I have a website which is um, the crystal healing experience okay. dot com and I call the it a crystal healing crystal experience, healing experience. experience dot com. Dot com. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you You're can, located here in Sarasota. I'm actually in Lakewood Ranch. Lakewood Ranch. Lakewood Ranch, which is in between Sarasota and Bradenton. Mm -hmm. And uh, people can contact me uh, through the website. My phone number is mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. uh, or they could contact me by email, which is simply my name, Angela.Valentine at yahoo.com and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, and any kind of person can come to you, right? Anybody. Uh, yeah. Anybody. Uh, um, if, if, a, if a child needs assistance, I would prefer that a parent is with them, of course. Have you had any pets come to you and it just occurred to My me. own pet. Your own. <laughs> no. She loves. We love our pets so much yes, I would imagine that somebody had brought in a pet by yes. now. Yes. She, she, our, our own uh, kitty loves crystals in her water. She sleeps oh, curled she up does. around a crystal. She loves the tuning fork. So animals respond very well to to, I should try that with my little yeah, one. Yeah, and they love the Reiki energy and the pranic healing. So yes. I would welcome somebody oh, would. <laughs> bringing, bringing an animal. It just occurred to me. Yeah. That, of course, know. now a horse wouldn't quite fit through my door, but I would... I would be happy to go to somebody's of course. place and, <laughs> and do some healing on animals. Yes. I love animals. Yes, yes. of course. So, uh, one last thing that yes, I would mention indeed. is I do also have um, a series of crystal essence sprays. What are they? And these are um, healing sprays that have holy water with crystals infused into the water uh -huh. and therapeutic grade essential oils. So if somebody wanted to use crystal healing at home rather than going to a therapist, yes. they could uh, cleanse their aura or use it for space clearing or perfect, stress relief. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very You're much welcome. for it was coming and wonderful. showing us all the, your beautiful crystals. Every one of them is gorgeous. And thank you for helping us. And, and um, I hope uh, that maybe we could talk about um, the tuning forks at some time in that the future. That would be fun. Yeah, because I, I, love I happen to love tuning forks very much, too. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you at home for tuning in and traveling with us beyond the matrix. Until next week, let peace and love be your guide.